Greetings all, it's the Devious Monkey here. All right, so it's Friday, uh, December 23rd. I didn't realize I had the day off today because I never pay attention to that shit. Found out that I had the day off. I found that out the hard way because I thought that the virtual Christmas party was today. And I got out of the gun range yesterday about 10 after, quarter after four, and set my work phone up. And all of a sudden it came up and said meeting in progress. And I'm like, what meeting? at four o'clock on a Thursday. And I pulled it up and it was the, the virtual Christmas party. And I was like, oh shit. So I ended up getting on it on my phone for the drive home before I then got into the studio and put that on. That being said, I was like, well, what the hell? I thought it was tomorrow. So then I started looking and then I'm like, shit, we got tomorrow off and Monday. So I didn't know that I had a four day weekend. <laughs> that's how clueless the monkey is. So that's that, but I, I had already shot this segment, intending it to be the final segment for the week because I haven't posted a video pretty much all week. And I was just going to put every day's footage together like I did last week and sort of wrap it up with this stuff. But then I ended up talking about all my cameras and, and my gear and shit and kind of doing a, like a, a gear flow wrap up of, of where I've been and where I am and where I'm going and thought, well, I've blathered on for so long that I might as well just make it a standalone video. So that's what I'm doing. So I'm shooting this intro after doing the outro of everything, the magic of editing, right? So without blathering on too much more, I'm just going to get in and talk about my flow. And this is going to be kind of a jarring edit cut to go into what I was talking about. But here we go. Okay, kids, back in the office. Oops, I forgot the ambiance. There we go, since it's all Christmassy and stuff. And Christmas is in two days. I just had to look at my watch for that. It's the 23rd, Friday the 23rd. I'm gonna be trying to do some different stuff as, as we work our way into the coming year. And, uh, you know, I like to say that there's only so much that I can show you when I'm sitting in the Forerunner. I kind of feel like it's even boring me to be just road raging and bitching and moaning or blathering on in the Forerunner or just sitting here, I need, I kind of want to start doing something a little bit different just because of the fact that this is a daily vlog and I'm just showing you my life. And like I said before, sometimes life just isn't all that exciting and adventurous and everything. Although it is going to start being a little bit more because I'm going to be on the road more, but you can see what happens when I'm on the road. A lot of times it's just me driving and driving and driving and driving, getting from meeting to meeting. And then it's just, not optimal for me to go out and record anything even remotely interesting other than showing you what I'm eating for dinner or sitting in the hotel room telling you I'm going to go out for dinner. Shit like that, you know? So I have spent the last year excessively buying shit. And I admit that, full well admit that. I've always been that way. But this year especially, I spent a lot of money trying to get my gear to match the flow of what my mind thinks it should be. And I'm there. And I can honestly say that I'm there. I have that A7R4, which from the moment I got it has been like my go-to favorite camera that I've ever had. It's fantastic. It takes banger pictures. It does everything that I need it to do, especially since I got it before I got into birding. But now that I'm into birding, that with the 200 to 600, I, I never take that apart. It's always that way and it's the camera that I'm gonna go out to. Now, that's even after having an A7 IV, which actually has bird eye autofocus and you know, newer this, newer that. It's why I'm not interested in the A7R5. I can go out with that A7R4. I know the controls, I know how it works, I know how it works for me, I know how to get it to do what I want it to do, and I'm out there getting banger shots of the birds and, and whatever else I take. So that camera is like my crown jewel that just sits there at the top of my pile. Now, I mentioned I got the a7 IV. I've actually had two of them and ended up selling one to my friend Josh because at the time I realized that, yeah, you know what, it just wasn't quite working for me. That is a great hybrid camera because I'm using it as a film camera, but also sometimes as a film still shot camera. And I love it. It's a great camera, don't get me wrong and I don't see any reason to get rid of it. And it's gonna sit there and I can throw any of my lenses on there and I can either film with it 
or I can take some banger pictures with it because most of the time I'm not gonna take the A7R4 out for if I'm just walking around taking a bunch of shitty pictures because I don't need 61 megapixels for that. The 33 that it has is fantastic. Plus the autofocus, blah, 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 and all that kind of stuff. And I know that it does video really well. So that's number two down there. Now, number three was this, the FX30. The FX30 is the film camera that I've been waiting for. And don't get me wrong, as this channel has progressed over the past four years, I've had so many different cameras, so many. It's just stupid how many cameras I've bought. And at the time, a lot of those cameras really fit the bill for what I was doing, but not just not quite right, not perfectly, not the way that I wanted them to be until this. Now I can say that if I had my choice between taking this, the FX30 out to film or the A7 IV, full frame, oh, the bokeh, you know, and all that kind of shit, I'm grabbing this one every single time. This is my filming camera. I have no desire to take pictures with it. I only did it once when Adam asked me, you know, you know, how are they on stills? And they're perfectly fine. The, still, the pictures that come out of this are perfectly fine, but that's not what this camera's for, for me. So I don't give a shit about no viewfinder, this, that, or the other thing. This is my filming camera and it is spectacular. It does everything I want it to do. I've already, you know, like I always tell you, when you get a camera, you need to be able to use that camera blindfolded. You should know where every button is. You should know what every button press does so that you get what you want without having to think about it. That's where I am. Well, that's where I'm at with all my cameras, but especially this one because of the filming, because this is the one that I use every single day. I'm always out filming on this every day. Whether I post something or not, I film every day. This camera now, especially with this 10 to 20 F4 power zoom, in addition to the 16 to 35 F4 power zoom that I got, fantastic. And before I got those two lenses, I was using my 16 to 35 2.8 G Master. Now that is still a fantastic lens. In fact, so much so, because remember when I wanted to get the Holy Trinity, the 16 to 35, the 24 to 70, and the 70 to 200, which I had never possessed before in my life since I've been doing this for 15 years. Now that I have the Holy Trinity, the full frame 2.8 G Master lenses, I can honestly tell you that I would sell the 24 to 70 before I'd sell the 16 to 35. In fact, I wouldn't sell the 16 to 35. It became my go-to lens. And that was both for filming and when I went out for pictures. I find I don't use the 24 to 70. Now I thought to myself, I'll sell that. I'll sell my 90 millimeter macro. I'll sell my 85 1.4. And then I thought to myself, I'm not gonna sell anything. It took me years, decades almost, to be able to have the resources and the knowledge to be able to get those lenses why would I sell them? Even though I don't use them that often, They'll, there will be a time and a place for them. And selling them and then eventually rebuying them out of remorse or for a different need, I'm keeping every one of my lenses. I'm not selling any of my lenses. Let's put it that way. So I'm good to go with that. Now, I do have that ZV-E10 and that has been one of my biggest disappointment cameras. And that's where I sort of got on my soapbox and talked about how I'm not really gonna be buying into any of these influencers anymore because they're just peddling product for their masters. That camera, for me, has been junk. It, it, it takes terrible footage, terrible footage for me, the way that I would use it. And that is a run and gunner daily vlogger that's in the vehicle all the time, that's out walking around the woods or walking around the streets or doing whatever the hell I'm doing. It just really, took horrible footage and then I had to buy that gimbal and then I had, couldn't get the gimbal to work correctly and I was pissed off about that because they put that proprietary plate on there and blah, 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 blah. So I went through all that shit to finally just admit to myself that that was a bad buy. So I was gonna get rid of it. I still might, I don't know, but for now, as I showed you in one of my past videos, I'm using it as an overhead camera. So I have gone through the insanity of buying several different action cameras. So, I mean, I've had plenty of GoPros very disappointing. I've had the Sony X3000, which is pretty much what I started a lot of my daily vlogging on, and I still have it. I'm not going to get rid of it because who's going to buy it? And I have had now several different Insta360. Insta360 is pretty much what I settled into. Now, they've had their problems as well because everybody does. 
No cameras are perfect, I'll tell you that. There's always going to be a trade-off on, on what you want and what you're going to get and what you're willing to pay for. So I got an Insta360R, I had a lot of problems with it, and then I got an Insta360RS which fixed every single one of those problems and that became one of my favorite cameras to the point where I was actually daily vlogging with it and using it and carrying it around with me everywhere. Then I got one of those uh, Insta360 one inch 360 editions. So they're, they're a big, stupid, expensive one with the 360, but it has two one inch sensors. Fantastic camera. Kind of did a little damage to it when I wiped out on my uh, electric skateboard and I like right in the center of one of the lenses, I, like I poked a hole into it when I slammed into the concrete or pavement, whatever the hell it was, it hurt. Then I ended up getting the guards for it from AliExpress. And for the most part, I don't really see that hole. Don't know. The problem with it, despite the fact that it's got double one inch sensors and it takes amazing, you know, like footage and all that kind of shit, is that it isn't water resistant. And they say, oh, you know, you can kind of splash water. Nobody splashes water on that shit. You're either out in the rain or around a marine type setting, or in my case, in Pleasure House Point, sometimes in ankle, uh, knee deep water, you know, like you drop it, you're done. If you're in a rainstorm, you're done. So that kind of bothered me. I got an Insta360 X3. Now, despite the fact that it has been recommended by pretty much every single influencer on YouTube, I did my research. I got a Christmas sale. I got a little kit. This came in the other day. I charged it up. I got the little like sticky lens covers or whatever. Those are on there now. So you can't really tell, but they're on there. So I've got the lenses covered in case I wipe out again and fall, or if I'm in the woods, like where I'm probably gonna be using this mostly, regardless, in my pocket, in my man purse, out and about, I got it covered, it'll be fine. I also, you know, like I have so many of these sticks now because they, they come with them in the kits and all that kind of shit. And then I use my little ZDO aluminum tripod feet. But one thing that I finally just found as I went through yesterday and looked at all the freaking accessories for it. And I started at the, oh, I'll get batteries and I'll get this and I'll get that. They have a freaking powered selfie stick. It has a 4,500 milliamp battery and it has controls on it so that you can start and stop recording. Now, considering this is how I would be using this, having a powered selfie stick, no brainer. So I got that, but that's not gonna be here until next week after Christmas. So I'm in no hurry though, because it's not like I don't have a ton of shit that, that I can film with. So that, on top of the fact that I can still use my iPhone, either of my iPhones, because I have 13 Pro Maxes, but I also have my S22 Ultra, which I specifically bought to film and take pictures with. So it comes in real handy when I'm ready to just like get some footage, like if I'm trying to show a mount and I've got this mounted and I wanna show you how I have it mounted or this, that, or the other thing, it's very convenient to be able to pull that out and record and know I'm getting good footage. The only other camera that I have now is my Fuji Film X-T4, which has become my still camera. The, the damn thing is amazing. And it's supposed to be even more amazing hybrid-wise as a, like a, a film getting footage, although I did not get that to do that. That's what I have the FX30 and my a7 IV. That's what I got all those for and all these action cams and all that shit. I didn't need another film camera because I've got that covered. But that thing is my like street photography camera where I'm gonna just go out and take all the pictures that I wanna take with it. And I only have two lenses for it. I have the 23 millimeter F2, which is the one that's gonna be on there 90% of the time. And it's a perfect everyday, everything street photography kind of a lens that lets me do what I had always intended to do with it. And with those recipes, I'm out there getting bangers and I love them. The only other lens I have is a 16 to 80, and that's an F4 lens. And that is also a banger lens, and it'll allow me to get just a little bit more, or a little bit more this way, rather than even just going that way, because, you know, it's a 16 to 80. So that's it. That's the gear that the monkey has. I just sort of wanted to go through my gear and my flow at the end of the year. So that's it. That's all I've got for you. If you have any comments, questions, or suggestions, leave them down below. As always, thanks for joining me. Be sure to like and subscribe. And remember, kids, forward and up.